Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonal Bhutra, and with me is Ekta Batra. Well, turning out to be a day where we are continuously seeing a lot of losses. Nifty is sitting with cuts of around 270 points. This was the week when we saw Nifty at that 18,000 mark, and this is the week where Nifty has fallen around 400 points from that particular mark. Midcap side of things, they are the ones which is uh, which are underperforming. So Midcap index is down 720 points. That's a two percent cut. Uh, on the mid-cap index, it is at the day's low. Uh, so it looks like we are finally, uh, uh, you know, going in line with what the global markets are doing, Ekta. <laughs> Hi, Sonal. Yes, absolutely. Maybe that decoupling which uh, JP Morgan, uh, you know, spoke about is not coming through, at least in today's trading session. So a lot about the global pressure that we are facing at this point. And on a week-to-date basis, at current reckoning, the nifty mid-cap, 100 is probably going to go home with cuts of around 1% at least. Nifty at around 1.2% in terms of losses on a week-to-date basis and similar cuts coming in for the Sensex. What seems to have turned around most in terms of sentiment is the broader markets like I just mentioned, the mid-cap index. The mid-cap index as a whole for today's trading session as uh, is at the low point of the day is, cu is currently sitting with losses of over toward percent lost over 700 points at this point in time you can see the pressure in the uh, in the advanced decline ratio as well which currently stands at around 1 is to 5 on the national stock exchange but a lot to discuss over so the next uh, 30 odd minutes let's um, first get to all of the top stories that we're tracking. The markets are at the day's low as continued global weakness hurts sentiment. Mid caps fall harder. All sectoral indices trade with cuts. Media, IT and auto stocks lead the decline. The Vedanta stock reverses some gains after it clarifies that its semiconductor foray will not be via uh, the listed arm, unlike what Chairman Anil Agrawal told us earlier, perhaps inadvertently. Uh, this was in an exclusive chat just some days back. VRL Logistics takes a knock after gaining an early trade. The goods and transport services company has announced the sale of its bus operations to its promoter entity for 230 crores. All right, those are the top headlines that we are tracking. Of course, it's largely focused on markets today, not very, a lot of individual names which are buzzing around on the back of fundamentals. So it's a good time to get a technical check on the markets. We have Himeen Kapadi of KR Choksi Securities joining us now. Himeen, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, well, that's exactly the question. What's happening in our markets? Finally, uh, we are seeing a bout of selling pressure coming in, in line with the global indices. Is it expected to continue? A very good afternoon to you, Sona. Thank you for having me. Frankly speaking, after a 2900 point move, the way the Nifty shrugged off everything and kept on going, even the bank Nifty, in fact, made a new high, uh, at least in the uh, to a 52 week high. So I think it was a bit overdone. After such a massive move, uh, one month or a four, four to five, six week time wise consolidation retracement was the need of the hour and that didn't happen so now frankly speaking and yes like you mentioned we are playing catch up with the global market so uh, the market was uh, looking for a reason i think we needed a correction to make it healthy if you're going to pay post a fresh all-time high much needed we are going to 17.5 are we going to 17.2 possibly but i think this is a much welcome overdue much needed correction frankly speaking so it is great it's come and uh, the only thing a bit surprising was it which was looking set for a rebound has slipped again but otherwise everything is as it should be and i think on a further decline it's a good opportunity to selectively look at stocks so okay all right well you said it's a much needed correction uh Himen, and that one should selectively look at stocks so what exactly would you be recommending in this market at this point which are the stocks that you would be strategizing to look at maybe uh to take over to the next week yes Ekta. i think uh for a few trading sessions, obviously, it's, it's, uh, the atmosphere is appreciated. Uh, the weeks has gone to almost 20. And about 20, it I mean, it's, it was expected, but about 20, I think that's going to cause further jitters. So firstly, uh, two sell calls and one buy call like that. Uh, a sell call on uh, Bharat Forge, negative divergence, crossover sell, uh, and uh, near term and uh, daily indicators uh, indicating weakness. So a sell on Bharat Forge at around 750, uh, stop loss 760, target 730. Secondly, a sell call on Sun TV. Nice distribution has happened. Uh, we've had a couple of rounds of negative divergences. The daily MACD RSI stochastic has signaled a crossover sell. 
and we are looking at a further downside. So a sell on Sun TV at 510, stop loss uh, 525, uh, target of 480. Uh, so a sell on Sun TV, sell on Bharat Watch. Lastly, a contra buy call on Max Financial Services. Contra because everything is wobbly, could remain wobbly for maybe five, seven trading sessions more. So a buy call on Max Financial Services at around uh, a conventional buy call, five rupees lower at around 810, uh, stop loss 790, target uh, 850. Volume spike has sustained about the 55 day exponential moving average. All the daily indicators have signaled a crossover buy. Plus there's been volume spike. So seems set for a bounce recovery. However, whatever you tell me. Okay. All right, Imeen. Thank you so much for taking us through your technical picks. Have a great weekend ahead. With that, we move on to our segment, Mid-Cap Movers. The index is not doing so well, so a lot of buzzers in the broader markets. Vivek is with us to talk about all those stocks. Vivek. Well, uh, that's right, Sonal. In fact, if you're talking about the mid-cap market today, uh, a little bit of a meltdown being seen. You know, some of the stocks that, you know, we actually had on our list, uh, they were gaining just some time ago. But today, if you're looking at them, uh, and especially in the last one, one and a half hours, they've seen quite a bit of an extended uh, slip up. Uh, now, the one stock we're looking at is Indian hotels. Now, this particular stock also has some FTSE-related inflows today. But despite that, you know, the stock that had seen a strong run-up is... Uh, falling in today's trading session. EIH associated hotels as well as Easy Trip. These are the two stocks that were doing quite well. Easy Trip continues to hold on to its gains. Uh, some of the defense related stocks, you know, continues a very strong up move. Have a look at Mr. Datu Midani up 9% despite the kind of fall that we are seeing across the broader end of the markets. Bharat Dynamics and Cochin Shipyard too continue to see gains in today's trading session. Uh, the other one, of course, uh, CSB Bank, when you're talking about this name, uh, the elevation of Pralay Molnal to the CEO has given a bit of a boost as far as the share price is concerned in today's trading session. Paytm, one of the uh, you know, stronger falls that we have seen in today's session, given the fact that there was some ED-related concern, the stock has managed to see a little bit of a recovery from the intraday lows. In Intellect Design, you know, at one point of the day, the stock was at the lower circuit. Again, some slight recovery coming in there. Uh, the logistics-related stocks, all cargo logistics, you know, down almost 7% today. We are in logistics down to 2.7%. Uh, uh, you know, the national logistics policy gave quite a bit of a boost to the stocks in today in this week's trading session. Today, both of them are seeing a little bit of a cool off. Lastly, you know, on the back of the upcoming IPO, Mankind Pharma, uh, you're seeing both Cupid as well as CTK Healthcare that are active in today's trading session. Okay, all right, Vivek. We're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and giving us all of those uh, stocks which are buzzing in the market today. Take a short break. But up next, we have an interesting uh, conversation lined up with MK Dhanuka of Dhanuka Agritech to discuss the company's outlook for FY23. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, well, for the markets, it's definitely weak at this point. Just watch out for a couple of these stocks. So something like a Tata Chemicals, which has been quite an outperformer on a year-to-date basis, it's gained around over 20-odd percent, is losing a bit of ground today. So that stock is down around 5.7 percent. We have Mahanagar Gas, too, which has lost around 4.5-odd percent. Bandhan Bank, which has lost over 4 percent as well. So there is uh, some amount of trepidation which is coming into a couple of these large mid-caps uh, through Glenmark Pharma as well as Lupin into the list. So both these stocks are under pressure. Anand Raj from the real estate space, which has given relative returns of around, uh, you know, over 12 odd percent on a year to date basis, has lost a little bit today. So that stock down around 4 odd percent. But let's concentrate on a couple of more mid caps. Let's in fact focus on an agrochemical company. A recent note by Nirmal Bang lists raw material costs, COVID lockdowns in China, and the European energy crisis as key concerns for the industry, even as it says price pressures might in fact be abating. To discuss the impact of these headwinds as well as the outlook for the se sector, we have with us uh, the company Dhanuka Agritech, the MD of the company MK Dhanuka, who's joining in. Um, hi, sir. Welcome to the show. If you could just start by listing out how business is doing currently. Like we mentioned, you know, there's a whole host of headwinds that, you're, uh, that the sector is probably facing at this point, from volatility in input costs to even the energy crisis in Europe. 
uh, is that impacting your directly in any way? Uh, you see, uh, we are manufacturing only the formulations. We are not in the technical grade pesticides, so we don't consume much of the power. So power uh, cost increase does not impact our costing. However, the raw material cost uh, plays an important role in the costing of the final product. Uh, but now, because of the less demand in Europe, because of the dry spell over there, the overall global demand is less and the prices in China are coming down. So now the uh, prices of the raw material are either stable or they are coming down. So ultimately, the pro uh, prices of final products are also reducing uh, month on month. So on an average, Mr. Dhanuka, how much have raw material prices gone down by? And because of production cuts that we've seen in Europe, do you think by any chance the fertilizer or the agrochemical industry in the country tends to benefit? Um, to the extent it is uh, depending on product to product, because some products the prices reduction has taken to the extent of 10 to 15 percent, while in few products it is 5 to 10 percent. So product to product it differs, uh, but on an average we can say 7, 8 percent uh, price uh, different, uh, reduction has taken place in the raw material side. And, uh, I don't uh, foresee any major uh, impact because of, the, uh, reduction, because of the less demand in India also. You know that uh, in India we are mainly dependent on monsoon and uh, as per IMD data, one third of the area has uh, received the excess rainfall and one third of the area has received the deficit rainfall. Only one third area has received the normal rainfall. So overall, it has impacted the sowing. The paddy sowing has been less this year. So overall consumption uh, is less. But uh, July and August has gone well for the industry because overall situation of rainfall is good. We can say considerably better than last year. So July, August has gone well, and we are depending on uh, September also. And uh, Definitely, Dhanuka is going to deliver double-digit growth uh, in the second quarter overall for the first half. Okay, okay. So, you're expecting double-digit growth. Uh, you know, Mr. Dhanuka, since we are on limited time here, I just wanted your thoughts with regards to Orchid, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical company that you all did take over. Your holding is currently at around 89%. You're mandated to reduce it to around 75%. Uh, I understand that you're not looking at the company actively, but can you give us your plans, outline your plans in terms of how exactly you would like you would do that? We are uh, discussing in the, uh, with Bombay Financial what people and uh, whatever the best uh, option will be available, whether uh, to come out with a issue or uh, to dilute uh, with uh, QIP, etc. We are uh, looking for the options and whatever best option will be available uh, since it's a mandatory requirement to dilute 15% uh, by March 2023. So we are looking, we are in the process of also merging Dhanuka Laboratories Limited with uh, Orchid Pharma Limited. So that uh, way overall the company size will be more than 1,000 crore after merger and we do hope that it will have the positive impact on the company. So you are confident of reducing uh, of a dilution of 15% by the month of March? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that is on Orchid Pharma. Uh, you did speak about raw material prices coming down. In that scenario, what happens to price hikes that you spoke about earlier that in August you were going to take some price hikes? Did you go ahead with that? A uh, few of the molecules, uh, because we are manufacturing around 80 products, so it always happens that uh, the prices of some of the molecule increases and some of the molecule decreases. So we every month take the decision of increase in the prices where raw material prices have gone up and we reduce our formulation uh, prices where the raw material prices has reduced. So that is the regular phenomena monthly basis. We are doing this activity. 
Okay. Uh. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Dhanuka, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks uh, very much for joining in and giving us your view both on Dhanuka Agritech as well as on Orchid Pharma. So that's the management view coming in. Dhanuka Agritech down around 2.6%. Maybe Orchid Pharma should come up for you as well. Maybe we could see that 15% dilution take place sometime soon. Uh, we'll uh, take a short break, but uh, up next in our special segment, uh, Mid-Cap Spotlight, we'll focus on VRL Logistics, an interesting mid-cap uh, development there, and understand what's driving the stock. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. Midcap index, by the way, has taken a further knock. The index is down 830 points. That's a cut of around 2.5%. So watch out for that one. But a lot of stocks in the broader markets, which are also moving around on the back of some news uh, flow that has come in. And in our special segment, Midcap Spotlight, Mangam is focusing on VRL logistics. The stock is in the red, uh, despite the fact that there is some uh, sale that they have made of one of their businesses. That's correct, you know, so the stock is lower by about a percent, but that's primarily on account of a couple of things. One, mild amount of profit taking, and also at the same time, we are seeing weakness in the mid-cap index itself. Uh, so, we are in logistics, remember, despite the cut that we're seeing for this week, is up around 6% this year, up 52%. In the last 12 months, it's uh, rallied about over 80% itself. And yesterday, there was an announcement that they will sell their bus transport division to a promoter entity, for which they will get about 230-odd crore rupees. Now, remember, the bus transport accounted for almost eight and a half, nine percent of their overall revenues in FY22. But importantly, the goods transport, transport business, which is majority of the company's business, was actually an EBIT, a profit-making company with about 271 crores, whereas the bus division made losses. Importantly, the company's uh, got a net debt of almost 155 odd crores, which is increased from 130 crores. So with this 230 crores that comes in from the promoter entity, to the company would actually make it a net cash company as well. And they've been doing that in the recent past itself. In fact, in July 2022, they went ahead and sold off their wind power division for about 48 odd crores as well. And why is a, uh, why are they doing all of this and why is this important? Well, because in uh, April itself, they had announced a 560 crore capex plan to uh, purchase about 1600 trucks, which would increase their carrying capacity by 25,000 tons over the next 12 to 18 months. And, uh, you know, in the first quarter itself, they've incurred capex of around 86 and a half odd crores. So they currently have about 73,600 tons in terms of capacity, and that would increase by about 25,000 tons. So that is one trigger watching out uh, uh, for VRL logistics. But importantly, Motilal Oswal on the back of this uh, bus sale development also has revised their FY24 EPS targets by about 8% because they believe that with this loss-making business going away, this would be uh, you know profitable for their EBITDA estimates and lower debt as well because they will get around 230 crores which they will use for CapEx. They maintain a buy rating on the stock with a target price of 860. Okay, all right, Manglam. Thanks very much uh, for joining in and giving us that entire 360 degree view on VRL logistics. So it's not just a positive brokerage report besides the fact that they've uh, exited one part of their business, but the fact that there could be lower losses and lower debt going forward for the company. Uh, but let's move on to the hospitality sector. CNBC TV 18 caught up with Royal Orchid Hotels, the management, and asked them about tourism demand trends as well as the company's expansion plans. Listen in. I think this is one of the best times that we are, we are seeing after the uh, dream run in 2003 to 2008. There was a dream run. And then, of course, there was a recession and there were multiple problems all over the world ending with COVID, which was a total disaster. And now what's happened is uh, the uh, what you can call even revenge tourism, revenge travel, whatever it is there. But we have not experienced this kind of you know, uh, euphoria uh, in the last so many years. So we're very excited. This year, our turnover uh, would be about 
uh, you know, uh, th- 300 crores uh, approximately turnover. And with the present hotels, the turnover next year will be about 350 crores. But with addition of more hotels, the next year we should look at 400 crores. All right. And the following years, with the existing hotels, we will be having 400 crores. But with new hotels, we'll add 500 crores. So the target is that from 300 to 400 to 500 crores, that is what we are uh, pitching for. Revenge travel, all right. The weekend that we are talking about and travel is picking up as well. So that's the theme, of course. But for the markets at the day's low, the selling pressure has intensified. So stay tuned to CNBC TV 18, all the action in the next show.